We never know what adventures life holds. That was certainly the case for my son, Brian, when he fell in love with a Chinese woman teaching at the International School of Indiana. Today, they're married and living in China, and I never imagined I'd visit China. Not once, but twice. First, in the early 80s for Wish TV. He says there are no simple answers, but he wants to meet with members of the entertainment industry and religious With the new noon anchor, Patty Spettler, and again this year, to visit our son Brian for the first time since the onset of COVID and to celebrate his marriage to Shue Zhong. The first time I visited, China seemed stuck in time. Guangzhou, the People's Republic of China. We know it as Canton. Located on the Pearl River, about 75 miles inland from Hong Kong, it is a three-hour trip by train. A trip through a land where time almost seems to stand still. Fast forward 35 years, and today, a bullet train makes the trip in 47 minutes. There are few, if any, privately owned cars in China, and it takes the average worker a month to afford a bicycle. And other means of transportation have changed just as radically. Today, everyone seems to own a motor scooter. Private cars are so abundant that in many major cities, people can only drive on certain days based on odd or even license plate numbers. Speaking of transportation, the subways are spotless without doors between the cars. Quite a contrast to the aging, graffiti-covered trains we rode in New York City. Everywhere you look, there are the subtle signs of change taking place. The way people dress, for example. Ironically, the most popular garb today seems to be the T-shirt, with an English slogan on it, often misspelled and misunderstood, like the baby bump T-shirt I saw on a 12-year-old girl. At the city's open-air market, vendors peddle cuisine of all sizes, shapes, and species for the careful shopper. They're still open-air markets. But Brian shops at a grocery store that resembles an Asian fresh market on steroids. Our future's a mystery. I never imagined that China would host the first gathering of our newly expanded family. We hadn't seen our son Brian since he moved to China in 2019 and married Shui Zheng. And he hadn't seen sister Erin since she married Aram Isha. As we explored the Buddhist temple in Beijing, it felt like I'd time traveled back to the 1980s. Even in this communist state, worshipers come to the Temple of the Six Banyan Trees. When Patty Speller and I saw the same ceremonies at temples in Guangzhou. Since that trip, there have been seismic changes to both farming and housing. Where the water buffalo is a family's prized possession. Where earth is still moved by the sweat of human labor. Hoosiers would feel down home on the farm watching modern tractors work fields of shoulder-high corn. And from Brian's apartment window, we saw towering cranes building acre upon acre of high-rise apartments. Everywhere we went, we were greeted with the same friendly curiosity we'd experienced in the 1980s. Back then, it was because few foreigners visited China. On this trip, it was because China's borders were closed during the COVID crisis. Yet on both trips, we found youngsters eager to approach strangers to practice their English. Would you like to visit America someday? Have you ever thought about that? If I have a chance, I, I will be happy to go there. Where would you like to go? First, I think I will go to New York. New York. Do you ever consider going? I'm famous us. Oh, did you ever consider going to Indianapolis? No. No. Do you know where Indianapolis is? No, sorry. While visiting a park in Beijing, William buttonholed us to practice his English. He was curious about our dog, Ghost, and how U.S. subways compared with those in Beijing. 
We found this reassuring because Brian supports himself teaching English. And I never thought I'd say this as Professor Schweitzer at a university. Throughout our travels, we were struck by the contrast between the old and the new, no more so than during our visit to the Great Wall of China. Parts of it date back to 700 BC. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. Viewed from above, the 13,000 mile long wall resembles a dragon with its head in the east, lying in the sea in Chenhangdao, where Brian and Shui live. It's a major tourist attraction, <laughs> complete with transformers for the kids. But the trip's highlight was trekking to the seldom visited Wild Wall and standing with our kids and their spouses on a section of the wall that has changed little in almost 3,000 years. Throughout this adventure, we saw majestic statues of lions and lion's heads. We learned they're symbols of strength and power. They're often found at the entrance to buildings to ward off evil spirits and protect the inhabitants. Our future is shrouded in mystery, but we feel a lot safer being protected by this lion's head that Brian and Shuei gave us. For Great Day TV, I'm Steve Schweitzer.